Hello world, Dr. Dev here. Now, I've uploaded a few laptop reviews at this point, and one of the top number one requests that I've seen down in the comments is to share my battery settings with you guys. So today, I'm making this video for you, the one-stop shop, the ultimate Windows 10 guide from Dr. Dev on how to get the best battery life. So, let's take a look. So just a really quick disclaimer, I'm really over the top when it comes to uh, trying to save power. So what I do every time when I turn on my laptop is I actually turn the brightness all the way down to the lowest setting. And then after that, I actually take my time and take a, a few steps up and I see what's the minimum level brightness where I can actually see what I'm doing and still get my job done. So I'm definitely pretty extreme when it comes to that front. So if you turn your brightness up halfway or more, your mileage will definitely vary uh, even following the steps in this video. Thanks. So the first thing that we want to take a look at today is our Windows Power Profile. So go down to the bottom of your screen here in your taskbar. We're going to right click on our battery icon and go to Power Options. Now in this view, we can see here there are some power profiles. My laptop, the Acer Helios 300, didn't actually come with any power profiles built in except for this Acer, um, some type of custom Acer power profile. It looks like some kind of tweaked version of basically balanced version. So what I did is I went over here to the left side. This is if you don't already have some type of power saver uh, icon here to choose from. If you have a power saver uh, option here to choose from by default, go ahead and click that and you're done. If not, we're going to go to create power plan. We can name this whatever we like. My power saver, my power saver battery plan and then we're gonna choose Power Saver. Go to Next, and then you can leave these default if you want or tweak them and create. Now we have a Power Saver profile, and when using this, I'm gonna show you what this does exactly. It modifies the governor that Windows uses for our CPU in terms of what our minimum processor power state is allowed. So looking here, minimum processor state for the Power Saver mode, it's set to 5%, which is super low, which basically means when you're doing productivity work, very low power tasks, it's gonna allow the CPU to go down to a very minimum power state. And to contrast this, to give you guys a little bit of a performance, uh, and to contrast this, to give you a little bit of a performance uh, tweak you can make as well for gaming to possibly get higher frame rates, you're definitely not gonna wanna be gaming on this power saver profile. So I have one here, but I'm going to show you as well. You can go to create power plan and then just choose high performance and then you can create your own high, you, you, and then you can create your own high performance battery plan. Now with the high performance battery plan, what this has the processor power management state set to as a minimum is 100% for plugged in. So basically if we're using a performance, a high performance power profile here in windows and we're plugged in, it's gonna keep the processor at a full 100% power state the entire time, which in my opinion, it's the, it's the only way that I use my laptop for gaming. So now that we have our custom power saver battery plan selected here, we can close this. There's one more step we can take this. Windows 10 kind of adds this extra battery saver option even on top of this which I guess is a little bit more suited towards tablets, but it works on desktop as well. So I'm gonna show you, we can turn it on for your Windows laptop and it's gonna give us better battery life. So we're gonna navigate down here to the bottom of the taskbar and open our notification tray on Windows 10. I pretty much never use any content here, but it gives us access to another powerful battery saving setting that Windows 10 has for us to use. So we're gonna expand our tiles here and these are very much geared towards tablets, but we can use them on Windows 10 and we can just turn this setting on here. This is Microsoft's Windows 10 Enhanced Battery Saver Mode. So just to show you exactly what it does, we can right click on it and go to settings. And what this mode does is for one thing, it's gonna be lowering our brightness automatically uh, to a set value here. And then it also has other things it does which limits background activity of apps as well as push notifications. So certain apps will be placed into enhanced sleep states. So this setting is going to be very powerful. I use pretty much every time I'm using my laptop in class or at work without a charger, I do, I do both of these things. I enable our power saver profile here and then I go and I enable battery saver in Windows 10. I'm definitely taking it next level here, but I'm reading about this setting and it's definitely gonna help us out. So we can enable this and this is gonna give us increased battery life 
on Windows 10. So I'm going to show you a few more things you can do in Windows 10 that can lower the background tasks that Windows 10 will be doing in the background automatically. Okay, so we're going to open our start menu, navigate to settings, and then we're going to head into our privacy settings here. And then there's a setting deep down below here, kind of nestled away, in my opinion, background apps. So these are all the built in Windows 10 apps, which are allowed to run in the background. Now again, if you have Windows 10 battery saver mode on that we just talked about here in the last segment of the clip, then it's going to put most of these to sleep. However, I just like to go through here and disable the ones that I'm not really going to be having to rely on in terms of having them perform background tasks for me just to be on the safe side. So 3D viewer, I don't need that. Uh, Acer product registration, definitely not. Alarms and clock, I would probably just leave on because Basically, it's just a clock service. I don't expect this to have much effect on battery life. In terms of connect, I'm going to disable that. Feedback hub, absolutely. Get help. Groove music, I never use it. I'm not going to touch the Intel graphics panel or my network control center. LinkedIn, get rid of that. Basically, you can go through here. Any apps which aren't referring to things like system services or drivers, you can leave enabled. So things like this, these are extra features, but you're not going to want to be touching NVIDIA. Notification manager for Adobe. I mean, these types of things, just anything you're not going to be really relying on. Just be careful. You're not going to want to be disabling anything here. Like, for example, if you have system apps, this app I know here controls things like fans, other things like that. So I'm not going to touch that. You got to really just be making sure here that what you're putting to sleep is just like simple user apps. So those are the things that I always, I always go through here and I disable everything that I don't need in this list. And those are the things that will really help us out. All right, and then one last thing I want to show you guys. If you have a laptop with built-in NVIDIA graphics, you're going to want to take a look in your NVIDIA control panel access by right-clicking on the green NVIDIA logo down here in your taskbar, and we're going to go to the control panel, not your GeForce experience. So in control panel, we're going to want to make sure here in manage 3D settings that the auto select option is chosen for our graphics processor. So if you changed it before, or if for some reason it's not set to that for default, we're definitely going to want to select auto select and then hit apply. So if this is selected, that means NVIDIA Optimus technology is available, which basically means if you're gaming, it's going to use our dedicated GPU from NVIDIA. If you're just in Google Chrome, then it's going to use the built in NVIDIA graphics and save you a ton of power. And then of course, you could always take it a step farther and go into program settings. If you want to take it a step farther and go through your list of programs here and select whatever program that you're using. And then for example, uh, even the NVIDIA GeForce experience, choose directly here, high performance NVIDIA processor or integrator graphics. I haven't really seen the need to tweak these very much on my own manually. For me, usually just leaving it at auto select, it served me well. So just go ahead and click this and then hit apply. And one last thing I want to show you to disable is startup items. So every time Windows 10 starts, it's not just loading the operating system. It's actually loading a list of different apps that you've installed and caching them on startup. So it's hard to say if this setting is actually going to help you save battery. But one thing I do know, it just lessens the load, in my opinion, of RAM and system resources taken. So we're going to take a look at this. It's just something it's just something that I recommend doing. So we're going to right click on our taskbar down below, open up the Windows Task Manager. And if it's your first time launching it, you might just see this first little small shrinked box here with <laughs> with basically nothing facing to the user. Just go ahead and click more details. And then we're going to go to the startup tab. This will show us a list of everything which is enabled. This is what Windows is loading at startup. It actually times here as well, how long your Windows is taking, how long your system is taking to boot up. But over here, we're actually seeing which ones are enabled or disabled. So for example, in my case, I disabled Adobe Creative Apps. I don't need these to start up when first I don't need these to start up automatically when using Windows. The delayed launcher, this one's by Intel. I just leave that as is. Discord, I would probably disable this just because there's a high startup impact here. But I use Discord pretty much every time I'm on the computer. So I leave this one enabled. This is something killer network, for example, this one is for my network. But basically, you can go through here and any apps which are not part of Windows or 
Intel or Nvidia or your drivers like, like Adobe apps or Microsoft Office if you see it here, or in this case, Logitech. You can see I disabled those. So these settings here, you just go to, you just go and you click on one, for example, let's say I had opened this up for the first time and this was enabled. You just scroll through, you click the app that you want to disable and just click this button down here and then you're done. It's easy, it's done, it's done and that app will no longer be loaded in system memory when first turning on your laptop. So that about does it in terms of user facing, easy to access settings, which Microsoft has opened up to the user built directly into Windows. These are the things that I tweak on every laptop that I use to get the most out of it in terms of battery life. But wait, there is more um, for you enthusiasts out there. The number one thing that I also do uh, to get the best battery life as well as performance out of a laptop is undervolting. So undervolting is actually a pretty simple thing to achieve on your laptop, just lowering the voltage that our CPU is drawing. It's accomplished using an official app from Intel, downloadable from their website, and I actually made a video on it already. So if you're interested in taking this even farther, not only in terms of battery life, but performance, I encourage you to take a look in the link down below in the video description. I'm gonna be linking to my other video on undervolting. Undervolting is just a slightly larger topic and it's not built into Windows. So the reason why I didn't include how to undervolt in this video is because I was just focusing on which settings we could tweak directly in Windows. So if you're interested in getting even more battery life out of your laptop, please take a look in the video description down below for how to undervolt. So thanks for watching. Please like this video if it helped you out. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. Take a look in the video description down below for that link to my other video on how to undervolt, as well as my social media handles and my Discord server. I'm online every day to help you out and answer some of your questions. And there's many other helpful people on there every day as well. So thanks again for watching. Tapoor Devout.